again, I don't give any background of sort, I jump straight into the project. A few things, I'm Professor of Interaction Design at Sheffield Allen University, the Art and Design Research Center, and this is a, a teamwork done with very uh, different uh, contribution, very different expertise from design to technology, social science, and the contribution of the volunteers of the Sheffield General Center. It is also uh, ongoing research inside the MESH project, that is a European project uh, recently founded, on which I am the coordinator, so if you have any question of any sort, come to me later. And these are the type of uh, challenges that we have posed ourselves inside the MESH project. So first of all, to use technology as an enabler for um, heritage, so to bring back the heritage at certain place, and hopefully I give you an example um, of my talk. Uh, second, we want to involve, engage visitors at different levels, not only giving information, but um, have a, trigger them toward emotional reaction. Uh, we will want also to offer choices, we've heard the asset that people come to museums and heritage in general for different purposes, so uh, information is just one of the possibilities. And uh, uh, we go with friends and family, so we don't want to isolate everyone from each other. And finally, we want to be proactive and, and, and uh, provocative and try to um, generate some reactions, or something different from, from the usual. But at the same time, we want to have a, a straightforward interaction so that people don't spend time trying to understand what's going on there. Uh, so yeah, jumping through immediately to the project, so this is a, a little case study done with the Gen uh, Sheffield General Cemetery. It was founded about uh, 1836 um, in the Porter Valley, um, that was about 50 minutes by horse from the, the city centre. And it was founded by the, a group of non-conformists, uh, so, so people who very wealthy, um, who did not, did not recognize themselves in the establishment, so particularly with the Anglican uh, church. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is actually is a, an artist impression used uh, very likely as marketing tool, because it was a business. It was funded to make money. Uh, and on the other side of this that I found in the local library, there is actually the different charges for the different size of plots, the monument, the tombstones, and so on. This is what it looks like today. So the, the original building is still there. This is the main entrance. But clearly, there is uh, uh, houses all around. That area was developed in, at the end of the um, 18th century. Sheffield had really uh, increase in, in population during the Victorian times. And now it belongs to, to the city, to the city council on the ground. But it's looked after by a group of volunteers. Um, it is composed in two parts, in a sense. This is the original part, so the non-conformist cemetery. You can see all the graves from Victorian times. In the background, there is the non-conformist chapel. Um, interesting is that people of every, um, every faith were uh, buried there, suicide included. That was not allowed in the Anglican part. And what it was, the Anglican cemetery, um, the, the, the tombstone from there were completely removed during the the end of the 70s, when the cemetery became a, a part of the uh, belong was uh, the property was moved from the uh, company to the, the city council. What is interesting to know is that um, very many bodies are still under the ground there, but the people who visit the park don't know it. Um, and this poses some interesting question: How much are we going to tell them about what is lay under? Be, you know, physically and the value they lay on the glass. Um, I said before that it is uh, looked after by a group of volunteers, they are very active, so there is a website with a, a few information, but they also organize a lot of activities. Um, very many tours, architectural, um, historical, uh, social, so a bit of um, Victorian society, uh, medical sudden death. There is one that it takes uh, place during lunchtime for uh, office worker close by. But there are also very different things. There is a bird watching uh, group meeting there every month. Uh, they have a fungi uh, visit. So also there is also geology, a geology group. <coughs> uh, our first step was to 
try to understand it. And so we spent, uh, we went uh, for a few visits there. And the main users, you can see there, there are two dog walkers with their dogs. <laughs> another, um, another popular use is, is a shortcut or is a park. You can see on the, the bottom there the, the lady with two children. And we have the chance to see that is used and misused uh, in, in different ways. We also took part in, a, in one of the tours that they do uh, once a month to better understand the type of approach they have, what they say, the type of story they, they tell. tell around. Um, so what we, what we learned is that there is, there is a lot of casual use. So people using the, the place as a shortcut between two parts of the city, dog walk, exercise, um, having lunch, a lot of students laying there when it's a sunny day. Uh, but there is a lot of interesting uh, content, different aspects, uh, starting from the architecture, the landscape. There is a lot of symbols uh, in terms of trees that the Victorians have planted there with certain morning meanings uh, that are obscure in the society today. Aspects of nature is actually a natural reserve inside the city, city center now. And uh, it's, uh, it's a listed, there are, I think, 16 listed buildings that are um, protected by the, uh, by the government. So it's both an, a, an open and inclusive <coughs> place, uh, at the same time clearly it's uh, vandalized, not much, but there is some episode, and it felt as a, an un unsafe <coughs> place, particularly during the night. It's very valued by the local community, and the, uh, the, the volunteers are actually really um, trying to push this further as a, as a, a, a center point for the um, area. And you will see I have a, a video clip. It's very different if you go there in winter, like the picture I showed you before, and if you go in the summer. So things that we have to consider. Um, we use an, as an approach a very comprehensive, we, we are a team of different expertise, as I said, <laughs> and we welcome every idea. As you can see, this is a, uh, we had a um, concept generation session, and we welcome everyone with ideas. This was a computer scientist, so the, the stick man. <laughs> and, and the idea in this case is that uh, he, he talked about uh, having a, a box or some device that you carry with you around the cemetery. And there are loudspeakers in points of interest. So by walking around the cemetery, we will hear the different stories that, that are told from the different points, from the, the tomb. Uh, this is a scan. The, rot, the red dots represent the fact that we have voted. So we had something like uh, 30 different ideas, and every one of us, that we voted on what we liked the best. And those were um, a, a subset was taken forward to development. So this was the initial sketch from the computer scientist, and then the designer came in, taking the concept and reworking uh, on that making something completely different, something that is, uh, looks like a book, and I have a shelf here. So the idea is that there are different pages telling different stories. So uh, uh, the, na the first one is uh, about nature, then there is a story of the uh, people buried there. We had the we, we wonderful with curiosity and fact that we found, and the favorite spots of the volunteers who took part in, in, uh, in the study. Um, all of these are different perspectives that can be selected by the, pe by the visitors using a magnetic bookmark. So you just place there, and so you select what you want to listen today. Um, we did, as I said, we worked a lot with the volunteers. So while we were thinking of what, what we would do, we, walk, we worked uh, with the volunteers. We involved eight of them. Um, we visited the, the cemetery. I, we asked them to, to lead the way and visit and walk around the uh, 14 acres, showing us the three points that they like best. And actually snippets on the, of the conversation are in the book in one of the perspectives. We also show them our ideas that are in place, so trying to um, elicit some feedback if we were thinking in the right direction or something that was different. Um, apart from having feedback on what we, what we have done, it was interesting to understand uh, in more depth uh, the details of the cemetery. I don't go in, in uh, too, too much, uh, but just to 
explain, for example, that here um, the fences are done both for uh, health and safety, because the ground is not completely safe, some of the, of the tombs have collapsed, but also because they want to keep uh, the natural reserve. So this helps all the little mammals to, to live in the, in the ground, and the owls, there is a colony of tawny owls that is very rare in the UK, particularly in the city, to live there because they can feed on these little mammals. Um, as I said, we had very many ideas in the, in the um, paper. You will find more details. I got, just go quickly through uh, the different concepts that we've tried to develop. Um, one thing that we find extremely important is to work with prototypes, uh, quick and easy things to just to shape our ideas and use those to communicate to uh, other members of, of the team or to the museum. In this case, you probably don't see it very much, but this, no, you don't see it at all. But this is a, is a bird box um, that actually has a projector there. And we built it by hacking a um, sound box for children. So taking the, the little motor from inside and putting into this completely different shape to realize something of this sort. So when a person walks a path, you can um, attract their attention toward a certain point by projecting. Things. Uh, second idea, again, the first, uh, very, in some cases things would be very simple, like the projection. In this case, the idea is to try to um, invite a closer exploration. So there is this permanent periscope there that in augmented reality will allow you to see what is now a, a green field, how it was before with the different, with the tombs on top of it. And uh, we come quickly to, to the book. It is here, uh, the companion novel, I would call it. This is actually a, more a system of things. So there is the book, but there are also loudspeakers embedded into objects that we have put close to the uh, points of interest. So um, again, I have the book here, so the shell, you can see it later on. The idea is that every page is a different perspective, and the visitor uses the uh, magnetic bookmark to select what they wanted to uh, listen to that day. It is all audio based and uh, actually what the content it is in the, in the pages is just to give an idea of the type of content that people would listen to. But things that you find in the book are not repeated by the speaker. Um, inside, uh, on this part, the bottom part, um, there is a, a, um, this is a beagle board that is the equivalent of a Raspberry Pi on an uh, older model, and a big battery pack. When we designed, we wanted to keep in mind the fact that this should be in use, so we didn't want it something that after one hour you have to go back, so the battery lasts for a full day at least. For the points of interest, we have Bluetooth loudspeaker. We decided to use Bluetooth because by measuring the si signal, we are able to uh, estimate how far or close the person is to a certain point. So what we do is that if the person is about 20 meters away, we, we play a very loud sound to attract the person toward a certain point. And when the person is closer, then we really play the, uh, the story. I have a little video clip, so I can show you the example. Again, with the idea of uh, uh, thinking this type of technology in place, uh, we have uh, uh, designed the, the, <coughs> the bird box similar, very similar to the one that projects, but after inside here there is a, the Bluetooth loudspeaker and there is a solar, solar panel with the idea that the, uh, you put those in place and they self-recharge automatically. Um, a little clip of how it Works. You can hear the birds. This is summertime. It was July. Oh, I'm sorry, you don't see very much, but Matt has selected one page and start to walk the cemetery. When I said it's very different from the summer to the winter. So this is the attraction sound, a very strong knee. <laughs> And so Matt goes close to the place, and when he arrives there, then the story starts. 
And experimenting, we found that, that uh, Bluetooth is quite uh, temperamental. So, for example, it must be in a high place. That's the bird box in the middle of the, of the tree. If you put it in, in a lower place, it must be completely clear around it. Um, because I only 30 seconds left, so we can leave Matt there. I have a longer video clip if anyone is interested. So with these concepts, we went back to the, and some pro the prototypes, we went back to the, um, to the uh, volunteers, we invited them to the university and we showed and discussed the different uh, um, things that we, we had. It was a very interesting discussion in terms of what we consider to be obvious that was not so obvious for them. And so a little bit of uh, reshaping and uh, reconsideration was, was in place. Um, very quickly, the final reflections that we did an iterative process of design and evaluation. This is core because it helps you redirect continuously what you're doing. Um, the volunteers complemented our team of designers and, and technical people. And it's extremely important to get out of your lab and go into the wild. Uh, I cannot tell you how many times things work in the lab and then we, we try them uh, outside in the car park. It worked and we went to the cemetery and things were not as we expected. So go back and forth many times, try to find something that is close to you so it's easy, easy to commute. And also the fact that is, uh, we think it's very important to use a holistic design, so not to think about the functionalities and try to dress them in a certain way later on, but do the two things at the same time. So the form of the book came as thinking with respect to, at the same time, we reconsidering the type of functionality. So playing the sounds in certain places and so on. Uh, yeah, I finish? <laughs> well, the Thank only so thing we, we think we have uh, tried to have both information and, and uh, affection, as I said, inside there is, for example, the weird and wonderful with bizarre facts that we found, so not necessarily inf information. And, uh, well, materiality we think is very important, it makes it to us, it makes a lot of different these instead of an application that you have on your mobile phone. And uh, considerations of cost and maintenance, I think, are very important from the very beginning, and this is what we're trying to do. Uh, and that's, if you want more information about the project, that's the website. Thank you. Okay. Thanks so much.